Lakewood is a town of Torah, a city that has grown exponentially through the Torah that has been the very basis and foundation of all those who choose to live in this wonderful town, but it's changed very much so. Rabbi Yitzhak and Rebetzin Shandy Kohn are well aware of that fact, having lived here for more than four decades, coming in when the yeshiva was in its fledgling state and really looked entirely different than it does now. They share their thoughts with us on the verge of their making Aliyah to Eretz Yisrael, which they feel is an extension of the wonderful experience that they've shared here, growing and living in Lakewood. So we're talking to Rabbi Yitzhak and Rabbi Cohn, Rabbi Yitzhak Cohn from Lakewood. He's been a veteran in Lakewood for a long time. He's going to tell us how long, and they're now making Aliyah to Eretz Yisrael. Let's learn about what Lakewood used to be like and why we should appreciate what it is now. Rabbi Yitzhak, how long have you been in Lakewood? And tell us what it was like when you first moved here. I, it, um, can I know her? It, it come out, it come out 40, 50 years that I've been in Lakewood. I came here as a bachar. And um, I was interested. Um, I wanted. I felt, you know, a drive to do something to uh, to to move forward. And there were, you know, the older people. There were a number. There was. It was. Uh, it was. What was it? Seventy seventy young light and one hundred and forty uh, bachram, something like that. And you came to the shiva, and you, you you wanted to do something. Wanted to, like this is, uh, I mean, looking back, the the hippies that was their rebellion against what their what their lifestyle was. And here was a bunch of people who were most nefesh. Um, I remember there was one young man. He had like a potato for supper. It's like it's like it's you know potato for supper, but it wasn't that. It was that you you were doing something, you were learning. Like you cut down to this is you had life had a had a meaning, to uh, when you went there, and the Rameir uh, Hershkowitz, who should be be gesund, gave me my fahir. I was not as capable as a lot of other guys, <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I sort of like uh, blended in with the rest of the, the rest of the guys. They were very fine people, very fine. They give the shirt of the uh, uh, there was uh, a shirt of the, the of the back of of his uh, of the back. There was there was five cars in the whole yeshiva. Now I like so you had room to park. What? You had room to park. <laughs> there was. It's not that there was room to park. It was if somebody had to go somewhere, another you know somebody else help you out. You were all brothers. And like you know, it's um, that was that was in the yeshiva, in, in that world, but just on the outside, I was just. Uh, a few years later, I was learning how to drive, and um, a lady, a little older lady, started to walk across the street. And you waited, <laughs> you waited till she crossed the street. You know, it was, it was a throw. It wasn't. If the, it were now, she might still be waiting. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't that. It was. It was a combination, besides. You weren't uh, the cutting edge of everything. You wanted to be there. You wanted to learn. You wanted to. You saw how uh, the the or so all, all the um, the people who were there for longer. How who, who was there then? Who who did you see? I saw the Rashiva of um, of um, my memory. You saw Rebarn? No, definitely. I definitely. I definitely. Ca- I came. Two and a half years after Rebbe was left her. So you obviously saw Rebbe Schneider. Yeah, right, I saw Rebbe Schneider, and I uh, Rebbe Schneider used to give a shear every every uh, week or something like that, and just as a, you know, wanted to see what it is to go up to the uh, to the head uh, right in front of the Arna Kodesh, and he would give the shear, 
and then it would touch the side of the, of the you know, it would hold the, the where you kept the uh, svarim, and it was worn down. The you know, Reb Shneir gave the shear. They say that Reb Shneir, he was part of Ravaran. So he was like he would when he gave the shear, he was like he was living that, and um, well, like uh, it was more uh, more of an extended family than a, than it is uh, like a yeshiva. I mean, it was a yeshiva. There was a formal thing um, uh, after Yom Kippur or or, or uh, during this during Yom uh, Tovim. The people danced. It was real. The whole, your whole, your whole, your whole self was was in it. What was the town itself like outside the Daladamas of the yeshiva? You knew every single person. This lady limps, <laughs> and I always saw her whenever I went into town. I mean, after nine o'clock, there was like there was no lights out. <laughs> the town closed, but that's it. But you knew everybody in town. Whoever was there, I had a friend, Kalman Adams, and he he would um, he would go around and fix it, man, and the, the police would stop him. What are you doing here? Oh, it's Kalman. Don't worry about it. It was like an it was like a middle uh, town, and uh, you were all part, you know, part and family. But in the in the yeshiva part, it was uh, there's a chasana. So all the cars went, of course, and everyone went where to did dance. They, where did they make a costume of them? They went in, um, what's the name of the, uh, the no, who was the family? What family was it? The, um, they were uh, very Did you make singers. the costumes here in Lakewood or they went out to New York? Was no, that? New York, there was nothing here. There was nothing, there was no, I mean, one time, I think, I think Rav Shem wanted to make a chasana. So they emptied out part of a new building and they had it inside. You still saw sort of chairs on the side and it's like um, out of town. <laughs> what do you think has been the biggest changes in Lakewood between those 40, 50 years ago and now? And what should the people who are moving in and the people who are here now really appreciate about about living in Lakewood? Wow. Well, you know, a spade is a spade. They, you know, you came here to learn. And that's what you did. It, it, it like, um, there was, when the air conditioning came in, the, 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 the uh, in the base matrix was air conditioning, and the dorm was no air conditioning. So Rav Nassim, the Mishkir, said, this is how intense it was that um, a person who stayed in bed, there used to be, uh, after the first Seder, Rav Nassim said, everybody has to go to sleep, rest up, so you'll be strong for the second Seder. But if you stayed a little longer, what are you doing over there? It was boiling hot in, in, in the dorm, and in the yeshiva, it was air-conditioned. So Rav Nassim said, you had to be a lahachas <laughs> If you would, if, I, I, how did you leave? Uh, uh, I, I, it's, I, you know, the, uh, the reality of it, how people just sat down and learned, you know, just like anybody else. It, uh, it, this is business. This is our business. You're on the verge now of moving to Eretz Israel in a very short time. By the time people see this, you'll probably be on, on your way. How do you feel about leaving Lakewood? And do you feel there's a strong connection between the the legacy that is here in Lakewood and the connection to Eretz Israel? Do you feel there's a continuation of your having spent all this time in, in Lakewood? Wow. I mean... Uh, uh... Who is it? Uh, uh, um, who is it? Um, 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 who is the Mishkiah in Kamenitz? Ramesh Einstein. Ramesh Einstein said 
that this city is a city outside, it's a, what do you call it? It's not a city outside of, of Eretz Israel. This is like part of Eretz Israel. It, uh, you know, and the brother, you know, everything, the learning, the, the, the straightness, you know, without any pretensions, any, uh, you know, uh, you know, that's it. you lived that life. You really lived it. Today, there are a lot of the other light here that, in addition to those who are in Kolel, also are are working and still attach themselves very much to the Seder Halimud that that they have here. What well, what what do you think that you would like as you're going towards the cell for the people that are building their lives here now? Maybe starting off where you know a little bit after where, where you were when you first got married. What would you be your, your advice to them? Chaperain. <laughs> it's everything is there. There are more yeshivas, more uh, base yakovs, just whatever it is, any place where there is, just take advantage. If you if you if you uh, here's the, here's the catering hall. Eat as much as you want. So what do you mean eat as much as you want? I mean like, you know, hey, I got to get back to Seder now. Chaperain. Mrs. Cohn, you were also a part of this legacy in Lakewood. Tell Very us what, much. You, yeah. what you remember as what Lakewood was like then, what it is now, and what you think people should learn as you embark upon this new tukuf in your life, moving to Eretz Israel. Okay. So when we came here, I think the edge of town was the yeshiva apartments. And it was not a, the yeshiva apartments, it was a hotel. Uh, there were very, very, very few businesses that were owned by from Yidin. Uh, Gelbstein's was not kosher that yet. We didn't have Kovi Sral. Uh, I remember I was teaching art in the Cheder. The Cheder had just started. And they told me that I'm going to have a very, very challenging class. It's going to be made up of 12 whole children. And they thought that was the challenge. The real challenge was that every single child was named Aaron, after <laughs> Rib Aaron, that's all, except for one. And I refused to call them by their last name. Um, nobody had families. We, we, uh, we were all, like my husband said, we were all each other's brothers and sisters. Uh, now, Baruch Hashem, so many people have families here, even parents, and there were no parents here. Uh, the parents that have come to Lakewood have added tremendously. And uh, it used to be, I remember one time, I wanted to ask advice from a very seasoned mother about my child, my baby, and this mother, has, she had been married for six whole years, and she was the mumcha, because that's what it was. Um, at that time, people didn't stay in Lakewood. It was a transient town. And if somebody learned, let's say, five or six years, that was considered very remarkable. Um, women didn't work as long and as hard. There was virtually nobody that worked past two o'clock. Um, there's, I think, one or two newlyweds who went to New York to work. Life was much simpler and much more um, basic. And we didn't mind it at all. We all supported each other. And if somebody found a good find in the flea market, we all applauded her. And um, it was just a different world. There were... Um, the cheder itself, and the, uh, there were no schools. There was no masifta when we came. And then when the masifta came, it was the only masifta, and it didn't offer English. So we all had to send our children away for high school if we wanted English. Uh, the schools were scattered all over town in basements, in uh, garages. I remember Mrs. Epstein going, you always saw her in the streets, going from one class to another. And the same with the cheder. And there was no option. There's, you know, it's just the cheder. And um, I remember when Beis Vega was built, it was such a simcha. And uh, very soon, Bar Hashem, it outgrew itself. So the choice of schools is a tremendous, very big change. There's so many masiftas, there's so many Beis Yaakov, there's so many chadarim which is a huge, huge change. And there's even, you know, um, not just the BMG, there's other schools, other yeshivas also. 
So these are tremendous, tremendous changes um, as I see it. Uh, I, I personally love the growth. I come from a very tiny coal mining town, Pennsylvania, where you barely saw a yeed. So when I see tons of kids and tons of schools and tons of buses, my heart sings. I really love it. And you don't mind the traffic? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, if I have time, I try to get behind all these buses. <laughs> what would be your advice or words of encouragement to both Colville wives and to wives of Vallabhat and people that are moving here, living here now, mm -hmm. because they want a Torah life? Really just to, first of all, cherish your neighbors. You know, uh, we had such wonderful neighbors, and I, as much as I think I appreciated them, I don't think I appreciated them enough. And they gave so much to me and taught me so much. And besides being a Torah town, it's a town of tremendous, tremendous chesed that I don't think you'll find anywhere else. And to be able to appreciate that and to know it's a very, very special place. I remember uh, years ago when I had a baby, um, the neighbors brought meals. And my mother, Allah Shalom, was here visiting. And she said, uh, you know, she was very impressed. She said it reminded her of Europe, of the chesed in Europe. But then she said in Yiddish, they're not going to do your laundry for you. At that minute, there was a knock at the door, and a neighbor said, you know, I have a half an hour. Can I do your laundry? <laughs> My mother was just blown away. But there's so many kinds of chesedim, so many gemachim, so many ways that people want to help out. It's just so incredible, and um, just the caliber of the neighbors. I don't think you're going to find this so readily out of town. And to appreciate it and to, you know, embrace it.